stupid boy. There are so many wonderful stories that float around, and I want you to separate fact from fiction. Right. On just The song was yours. Mm -hmm. People know it from Keith Urban yeah. and the success he enjoyed and how that certainly helped you as a yes. writer well, and as an artist, for that matter. Give you artist. that credibility you're looking for, that acceptance, and then when somebody at Ugh. the top of their game like Keith Urban records your song. I love him. They'll let you pick up the story there. He heard the song, a good friend of mine actually um, does day-to-day -day management for him, Betsy Cook, and she was on his bus and happened to play the song for him thinking that you know, if I got a real big hit last year on my own, that maybe he'd want me to come out and open for him on his tour. So she's like, check this girl out. And that's just what's her favorite song on the record. So she was just playing it for him, and he was like, that's a bloody hit, I think is exactly what he said. <laughs> and he just, um, he, 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 she said, he wants a copy of your record. Is that okay? So I found out that he had the record and that he loved the record, which was just as exciting as anything. And then I found out he wanted to cut the song, and then I found out it made the record, and then I found it was gonna be a single. And then it went to number one, and it was just like, ah. Uh, and I just feel this connection with him because I know how much it means to cut someone else's song. There was some thought that it should be a girl song, and then yes. it was a guy song, and then Nicole, you, apparently his wife, Nicole Kidman, had right. some input on that? Yes, it was a girl song. It was very much a girl song. I never thought about it being a guy song. But interestingly enough, Dave, one of my co-writers, used to perform it in his writer's rounds and do the version that Keith does. But Keith didn't know that. So he just had my version going, man, I wish I had a song like this for my, my record. And uh, he just basically, she, she said, well, why don't you cut? He goes, well, it's a girl song. I can't you know, sing it about some other guy. That would be so weird. And she was just like, change that one line and have it be about yourself. You're talking into the mirror. And... Um, Man, he just did it. I'm like, ah, <laughs> golly. And here, go ahead one more time. It looks so good on you. Oh, gosh, I'll just make a necklace like Flava Flav. <laughs> just carry this around on my neck. Be like, <laughs>the most songs you have written in say a single day or a single week i mean oh, not yeah. that you, i mean have, have you, has there been a time where you've just gone on a rampage and just written bunches of songs in a short period of time or not yes and no generally speaking i would say i don't do that i probably if i'm doing good work i could write um if i write more than five songs in a week i might drive myself crazy i don't like it because I don't write, there's some people, I'm going to say something that might make some people mad. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Certain people write more songs than they should. <laughs> <laughs> because lots of their songs are just really bad. And they're like, I'm so prolific. God, <laughs> look at my catalog. And I'm like, but how many of them does anyone want to hear? <laughs> you know? So I'm like, yeah. just stop. Just take a day off, spend it with your wife. You know, <laughs> go home. <laughs> Sleep in. By all means. But, you know, and so I just try not to write bad songs. So if I get halfway into a song and I really don't like it, I generally don't want to finish it. And that's really bad and good. There's, two, there's different ways to look at it. So I... <laughs> that quote is right out of the, the Waylon Jennings, Merle Haggard, Willie Nelson. That's, that's perfect. You're right there. Oh, I could just hear them saying it now. Yes.